Hello, young voters. Welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to be talking about The Anatomy of Fascism by Robert O. Paxton. Now, this is a book that I read, um, decent length book. So, you know, it's it's 11 hours on Audible. And um, what, what it really does is, you know, The Anatomy of Fascism, it dissects uh, various fascist movements throughout history and um, commentates on you know the historical situation why certain things happened the way they did which fa which tactics the fascists use etc and then also sort of lays out some characteristics of fascism now fascism very hard to define um if you've read my article on um is trump a fascist which will be linked down below um i took um uh, umbrero echoes 14 points of fascism so you know th those are uh those are our set of characteristics that we can kind of define to that. Um, but really, the, they're not so accurate, um, if you really think about it. And as, as Paxton goes into on the book, um, you can't really define fascism. It's purposely murky and uh, purposely doesn't really have a real uh, ideology that really actually makes sense. Um, and that's just how fascism works. Whereas capitalism, socialism, communism, um, you know, other, other political movements, but those are, you know, the main, the main ones. Um, besides fascism and then you know all their all the sub-political movements like neoliberalism and, and stuff like that but my, my point being is that um they have like at least you there is logic that you can follow to get to the points where they arrive fascism not really not so much um there's a lot of just things that don't make sense and a lot of contradictions and you sort of have to um be convinced and and, and a, a lot of different things um are reasons why fascism arises which i can't really i don't want to go into too much because this is supposed to be a review of the book not a summary so um but yeah so if you're interested in um history really because it's this uh foremost is sort of a historical analysis of various fascist movements i would recommend reading this book um if you are interested in understanding why fascism occurs, how fascism occurs, what tactics they use, and how to identify fascism, I would recommend this book. If you are, if you're, if you don't like history very much, and you have a hard time sort of taking analysis from historical events and, and sort of seeing how things connect and uh, why things happen the way they happen, and how you can relate that to um, yourself and compartmentalize this in your head. Um, I would maybe not recommend reading this book. It might be a little bit of a waste of your time because that's really how he does it. Um, there is a certain amount of explanation, but some of it you just have to sort of make the connections in your head and he sort of lays them out as to be um, evident. So yeah, um, some complaints about this book. Um, you know, he, he does do a fair amount of restating, which on one hand I like, and on the other hand I don't. Sometimes it gets boring and sometimes it's, you know, over the top, but on the other time, on the other hand, um, restating can be very good at uh, making it so you don't have to memorize the whole book because it just keeps the same concepts concepts keep coming up and he basically what he does is he'll say you know he'll he'll sort of craft a narrative and he won't say it all right um, and this goes back to his historical analysis he won't, he'll sort of he sort of crafts a narrative throughout the book and he takes his time but he sort of try he's like, he like he leads you to water and then waits for you to drink and then he keeps doing that so that so that you will be guaranteed to have been to have started to drink um so he just keeps leading you to the water and keeps doing that through different analysis of different uh fascist movements at different times and you're you're expected to find your way into drinking um so that, so that goes back to that but you know what the nice thing is is that you don't necessarily have to be paying super attention to this i read it on audible and I did various stuff while doing this. I listened to it while I was doing the dishes, um, you know, cleaning, vacuuming, et cetera. So I was able to, to listen to it while doing that type of stuff. So you don't really 100% have to be focused on it, um, which, which is nice. I like that. Um, obviously, it's better, but you don't have to memorize the whole book because it's sort of teaching concepts through historical analysis, which I enjoyed. Um, one thing I didn't like so much was there was a decent amount of class um, analysis and there was a decent amount of analysis of left-wing movements that were in opposition to fascist movements and obviously that's you know that's very important um because you know it's, it's sort of a, the central idea uh one of the central figures behind the the fascist movement so um while he does have some class analysis and he does have some left-wing analysis and it's enough i i don't have a problem with it um 
it's it's plenty um i think and he's not a particularly left-wing author so it's you know it it's honestly better than expected really um so there's a decent amount of class analysis a decent amount of um analysis of left-wing movements that were in opposition to it um to see a little bit more would have been nice but not necessarily required really um at all he does economic analysis as well um so if you sort of if, if you want to take it from a, if you want to look at it from a Marxist perspective, um, then you might have to know some stuff beforehand about uh, fascism and class and stuff like that. Um, but if you, you know, but as a general perspective, it's totally fine. And, and that's how I went, went through it. Um, and that's how I enjoyed it. But if you are looking to see from a Marxist perspective, this isn't necessarily a source that will uh, fulfill that. But I think, honestly, I think sometimes Marxist perspectives on fascism, fascism can be a bit misleading and sometimes a bit, you know, a, a bit diluted and a bit, um, there, there's a lot more bias there because obviously, you know, Marxism and fascism did not mix w whatsoever um, besides, um, you know, even, even though some on the right may say Hitler was a socialist and so was Stalin, uh, that is completely not the case. And that is just, absurd and um you know marxists and fascists have uh, a, a long clashing history so i feel like when marxists sometimes write about the fascists they sort of get um clouded by their their own their own background and and i think i enjoyed this analysis a little bit more um than i feel like i would have through a marxist analysis um you know i haven't really read uh much but i have you know i, I I've seen, I've you know, sort of absorbed what the what the might the ideas might be around fascism um, from different publications and stuff like that. So, uh, and you know, I've read I've read passages, but I haven't you know I haven't read a whole eleven hour book on it, and I probably don't intend to because um, I don't I don't necessarily agree with their whole framing of things. So, kind of would be kind of productive. So, anyways. Uh, so yeah, I, I think that's, those are most of my thoughts on the anatomy of fascism. Uh, fantastic book. It's cited a lot. It's one of the foremost books on fascism really. And I think if you want to understand fascism, this is probably a must read. Um, if you're, you know, if you're, if you consider yourself to be a historian, maybe a political historian, this is really a must read. I think it does a fantastic job of cataloging and, um, helping you understand in a fairly simple way, in a way that you can understand fascist movements. Um, cause it's just immensely complicated and uh, I think it does a fantastic job. Like I said, Paxton is often super cited in, um, discussions talking around fa fascism. Um, one last thing that I would like to point out is, um, there was a lot of debate in the, in the, in the sort of historical community around the January six riots and, and Trump, and is, is he a fascist? So I believe, and you can correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but I had read um, that Paxton had previously believed Trump is not a fascist, but after the January six riot, he's called Trump a proto-fascist and the, uh, and the, and the insurrection um, at the Capitol, a, a fascist maneuvering. Um, so it seems that he did that really, um, put him into, into, you know, and I think we should take his, he's just done so much research into the field that I think his word is sort of, uh, very valuable. So some just, you know, in conjunction to the book that I found interesting and that I want to share. So I think that's basically it for my, my book review of it. Um, not super in depth, not, you know, summarizing a whole lot, but just, you know, hopefully, hopefully it was useful, um, is basically what I'm trying to say. And I guess if you want a more in-depth, I can, I can do that. So, um, yeah. And, and tell me if I, if you enjoy book reviews, um, cause I am, I'm reading a decent amount of books. I'm sort of more left-wing books right now, although the fascism one was more historical. Um, so if, if you would recommend some, some more, um, centrist or right wing books as well on political analysis, um, I'd love to do that. Uh, and yeah. Um, and, you know, as if you want more book reviews, a more in-depth book review would be our Me and Sarah's series on Rosa Luxemburg's um, book on uh, Reform and Revolution. And that the, play, the link to the playlist will be in the description. Uh, the link to our website will be in the description. And the link to my pundit page on the website will be in the description. Um, our Discord and our Instagram will also be in the description. 
and um, the um, the uh, the full completion of pi with every single numeral, I mean, with every single digit will also be in the description. Um, so there you go. Uh, all right, hopefully you enjoyed. I'm just gonna end it there. Thank you.